So in this video, we'll go through a quick overview of the Illustrator workspace and get familiar with some basic shape tools. We'll also use some shortcut keys to help us access the tools quickly and use modifier keys, which help us perform quick functions or access tools to make us more efficient with the software and navigate through the workspace. So the first thing I'll do is open up Illustrator and we'll go to the file menu and select new or command N, which is the shortcut key. And you'll notice shortcut keys are actually indicated on the right hand side of the menu items here. So I'll hit Command N, and then it will give me a new document pop-up menu. So two things that we're gonna be creating this semester is some web projects and some print projects. So from the top here, you have some preloaded um, templates that you can choose from. You also have some web profiles and print profiles as well. So they come with some default sizes for your projects. Our first assignment will be a print project. So you will probably be looking through this sort of um, preset to start off your project. Um, over on the right hand side here, you could choose or type in a name for your project. And you can indicate the size of your document or the dimension of your artboard. So one thing you could do with Illustrator is actually change the units of measurement. So here we have points by default but we can change this to either pixels or inches or centimeters. So for this, I'll just choose inches and I'll just leave it to a basic or standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Now we can switch this to either an orientation of landscape or portrait. Um, you can put up to 99 different artboards in Illustrator. However, that is restricted by the size of each document. So what that means is if we are creating a poster art design for our print project, we can have all three or we can have three different variations of our posters in one single file. Um, same thing goes with our web layouts. So we can design different app screens or multiple app screens in a single Illustrator file. Um, in print, we can set a bleed and the bleed is basically the uh, area of the page that or the area that exceeds the trim area of a page so if you want things like a color or a picture to extend beyond the trim area whereas where you cut the final artwork you can uh, put a bleed in here and usually the default for bleeds is one eighth of an inch or 0.125 inches uh, in print, we also use a color profile of CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And we want to have images or print images uh, that is a resolution of 300 DPI or PPI, which is pixels per inch. DPI stands for dots per inch. And that basically just refers to how many dots of ink um, per inch of the page that it prints and on your screen is how many pixels per inch it shows. So of course, the higher the resolution, the more dots per inch or the more pixels per inch. Illustrator also has the ability to preview your artwork in different modes. So we know that you know Illustrator doesn't really depend on resolution until we set its output. But from here, you could choose default, which basically shows you those crisp sort of um, Bezier lines and sharp curves. And we can also preview to see what our Illustrator artwork would look like if it was on a pixel grid. Um, if we're doing some pre-press work, we can see what this also looks like with an overprint. So maybe how spot colors can mix together and create new colors. So from here, I'm going to click on create and I'm just going to go through the interface real quickly. So your sort of default mode will look something like this right now. So right along the top, we have our menu bar. And of course, we have our Illustrator menu where you can adjust your preferences, such as your units of measurements or your guides or your grids. We have our file menu, which you can either open files, create new documents, close your files, save them. Um, if you're going to be tracing things like we will do this semester, um, certain artwork you want to place items or place your sketches inside of Illustrator and then you can trace over top of them with some of the basic shape tools that we'll learn today or also the pen tool. 
We can also export some of our artwork that we create for screens or for web uh, if that's what we're going to do. Um, you can also do that for um, animation or character design as well. And we can also adjust our document setup after the fact. So we can always go back and change our document setup or our page dimensions if we need to. Uh, your edit menu is anything to do with editing your objects. So things like um, copy and paste, paste in place. You can paste your artwork on multiple artboards. So if you want them to be in the same exact position on every page, you can do that as well. Um, you can also adjust your color settings here. You can add your own keyboard shortcuts. Anything to do with objects. So Illustrator not only is, is known for creating vector objects, but it's also called object-based um, graphics. So anything to do with your paths to sort of modify them would be found under your object menu. So if you want to transform something, meaning you want to reflect it, rotate it, invert it, mirror it, you can do that here. You can align objects, you can group things together, and we'll go through grouping as well. Um, anything to do with changing like your path or joining line segments or anchor points, you can do that within your object menu. Um, under the type menu, this has to do with a lot of the typesetting. We will take a look at typography as well in this course, so we will use Illustrator for that. Um, the select menu, if you want to select objects in addition to some of the tools that we have available. And also Illustrator has the ability to apply both absolute and relative effects, meaning it can apply Illustrator effects, which are not dependent on resolution, or Photoshop effects, which are dependent on resolution. Um, so you have those two options here. Our view menu is to navigate our workspace so we can zoom in, zoom out, our different previews. You have presentation mode if you're going to be showcasing your work. Um, things like showing grids or rulers, snapping to grid. Those are all things that we will learn over time. Um, your window menu will show you things like your panels okay, and your, your um, control panel. So if I wanted to showcase my control panel here, I can click on this and my control panel will show up. And you'll see that when I start to click on different tools, this will actually update my control panel as I go to give me some, um, some other or advanced tools that I would need that sort of work with the tool that I have selected. So right below your control panel on the left hand side is your toolbox. And now they are broken up into different sections here. So the first sort of sections are your selection tools. So you have your selection tool. And if I hover over this, you'll see some quick tool tips. And that will show you the shortcut keys. So your selection tool, the shortcut key is the letter V. And this will ac actually select your entire um, object, um, including anchors, fills, strokes, and line segments. Your direct selection tool, tool which the um, shortcut key is the letter A, that will allow you to select specific anchor points or line segments for you to um, modify them. Uh, we have your pen tool, which is something that we'll get into in the next lesson. Um, and this basically allows you to create custom shapes. So once you sort of master this tool, this will allow you to create anything that you really want from character designed to um, UI elements or custom UI elements or custom illustrations. So this is a very powerful tool and you will have this tool in other applications such as Photoshop and InDesign. Um, but once you sort of master it in sort of Illustrator, then it's sort of this, it works the same way throughout all of the other software applications. So we'll take a look at those. Today we'll also be looking at the basic shapes tool, right? So if you see some of these tools here and they have a white arrow with the bottom corner, if you hold down for about one second, you will see multiple shapes nested inside of there. So Illustrator has the rectangle tool, which the shortcut is the letter M, your ellipse tool, which is the letter L, which is the shortcut key. You have your polygon, star tool, and line segment. Right here is your tear off tool. So if you want to tear this off, you click on that and you can position all of your tools somewhere on your artboard and now you can access these different shapes. One thing when I start to get into drawing shapes is, right, we don't have a square tool or a circle tool, but 
we will learn about modifier keys and how to access or draw these shapes using our modifier keys. Okay, we also have tools like our pencil tool for freehand drawing, um, our type tool for typing out or styling type. Uh, we also have some other tools that we'll use today, which are our navigation tools. So you have your artboard tool, which allows you to click on that. And then you see your control panel changes and you can either change the orientation or size of your artboard. You can also name your different artboards. You can copy them. You can change their size, right? And it also gives you that ability here in your properties panel. To exit your artboard mode, you can just click on any tool or you can hit the escape key to um, jump out of that mode, okay? Another thing that you'll notice here in your toolbox is your magnifying glass or your zoom tool, and that's the letter Z. So if you do want to zoom in on a certain area of your artboard, you can either click and scrub or click and draw a marquee selection and it will zoom in to that area. You also do have some shortcut keys such as uh, command minus, which is to zoom out, command plus, which is to zoom in, command zero, which is to fit in screen, and command one, which is to uh, be at full screen mode. Okay. Um, the last navigation tool that we will look at here is sort of just navigating your fill colors and your stroke. So when the fill is on top of the stroke, that means that you can now fill an object with an attribute. If you click on the stroke key to make that um, on top of the fill, now you can apply a stroke to your object. And you can switch between these two just by tapping on your X key. And that will toggle between the two to make them active, okay? So just getting familiar with the shortcut keys can actually make you a little bit more uh, quicker and efficient within the application. Um, if you wanted to even remove a fill and just have a shape with a stroke or remove a stroke from a fill, this would be called filling that attribute with a none value. And that's this little icon right here, right? And that's the forward slash key. So if I wanted to select my fill and remove that, I can just hit the forward slash key. And now when I draw a shape or draw something with the pen tool, it will only give me an outline stroke and basically a transparency for its fill. Over on the right side here is my panel menu. So here I have my properties. So anytime I draw a shape, it will update and it will tell me, you know, if I draw this shape here, it is now 2.629 inches by 1.7981 inches. Its position on the vector grid values are here. In my appearance panel, it tells me it has a fill of none, a black stroke that is one point thick with an opacity of 100%, okay? So it gives me some information about the shape here. So I'm just going to hit the delete key to delete that. Um, again, in your window menu, it does have a whole bunch of other panels that you can choose from to pop out. So things such as like your swatches panel that gives you a set of different colors and libraries. And we will go through this as well um, in a later video or later lesson where you can choose different colors to fill your objects with. Um, and also along the right hand side above your panel menu is your workspace menu. So right now this has essentials. You can choose essentials classic, which is a legacy format. You can also choose different workspaces. So if you're going to be doing typography for maybe your first assignment, which is your poster design, it will basically lay out a workspace that gives you the tools that it thinks you will need for doing any sort of type design work, right? So if you click on web, it will do the same and update you with some libraries, your layers, um, your CSS properties, and so on, okay? If you're not familiar with Illustrator and this just shows you some icons and you want to see what do these icons actually stand for, you can just hover your cursor over the edge on the left hand side and then click and drag and pull out the panel and it will give you the names that are uh, relative to the symbol or the icon. OK, 
Okay, so if you're new to Illustrator, maybe pull that out, get used to them. Um, if you click on one panel, it pops out in its dock, right? So you can always sort of like pull these out of the dock as well and rearrange them and customize your workspace. So if I just pull them from a dark area and I could just snap them away. So let's say if I want my uh, character panel and I want to grab my layer panel and separate that, right? I can move those out of the way. And then what I can do is collapse some of these panels by clicking on this small double uh, sided arrow and collapse that and tuck that out the way. And I can position my panels here off to the side somewhere on my dock. And if I want to link these two together, I can click on my layers right in this dark area and click and snap until my cursor shows this blue line. And now it locks it to that panel. So now I can just kind of free float this and move this anywhere, right? So if this is sort of the layout that I like and I'm, I'm kind of used to this, if I'm doing a lot of, you know, user interface design and I want specific panels that I always work with a parent, um, I can rearrange them or organize them anyhow I like. And then I can go back up to my workspace area and I can choose new workspace from here. Okay. And then I can give this workspace a name. So what marks web interface and I can click OK. And then now that is saved. So if I choose something else or if I just open up a bunch of panels and things start to get like a bit messy, you know, and things are a bit unorganized, I can go back to Mark's web interface here and it cleans up the workspace for me. Okay. So that's sort of like an overview of the interface and the workspace of Illustrator. And in the next video, we'll take a look at some basic shapes and how to draw those with modifier keys. So that will get you familiar with um, drawing fundamental shapes and the groundwork for your objects. Mm -hmm.